<laughs> now, I've always had a soft spot for small cars. No, I don't mean Fiestas and Fiat 500s, but those marvellous mini machines from the 50s and the 60s that everyone knows as bubble cars. <laughs> What is a bubble car or micro car? Well, it's hard to say. It's a car with an engine from 200 to 700 cc. They've usually got three wheels and two seats, but there are plenty of exceptions. I'm in Cranwell, Lincolnshire, in a museum devoted entirely to micro cars. Now, there are 50 of them here, so it must make it one of the biggest micro car collections anywhere in the world. The most I've ever seen in any one place are three, so it does therefore make it somewhat different. Microcars were born in the 50s when proper cars were very pricey and a motorcycle and sidecar were not quite practical enough either. The bubble car was an in-between vehicle, cheap and cheeky and quite fun. For a few years, they were a common sight. Probably the best-known manufacturer of bubble cars was Messerschmitt. Yes, the same company that made the famous fighter planes used in World War II. And the cockpit here is definitely reminiscent of a fighter plane. Now, it's quite a work of art getting into this contraption. You've got to lift the cockpit lid. The seat has to be put into that position. You've got to lower yourself gently into it, but you can't then reach the pedal. Oh! Good Lord. <laughs> there are lots of different makes of bubble cars. Vespa, Heinkel, Duff, all very different and all very cute. Now, this Izetta is owned by Jimmy Savile. I wouldn't have thought he could get in here with his huge cigars. Izetta was an Italian company, but it was later bought by BMW. Not quite an M3, though, is it? There are British bubble cars, too. Laurie Bond from Lancashire gave his name to a collection of very odd little three-wheeled machines. Now, the attraction of the Bond mini car was that you could drive it on a motorcycle licence, bearing in mind that in those days not many people had full licences. Now, I actually had my very first crash in a Bond mini car. It had conked out, I was being towed by a friend in his father's Jaguar. He went round a bend, I turned over, he didn't realise, kept pulling me and I was upside down for half a mile. I've never been the same since. The Bond bug from 1970 was and is very famous in its own way. It was sold as the definitive sporty bubble car with its wedge shape. It achieved cult status, but within a few years, microcars had almost gone. As normal cars got cheaper, they no longer made sense. And would you believe it, they even had micro caravans. This is the nutshell, and it was made in 1950. Other British cars include the AC Petite, the Meadows Frisky and the Scooter Car. I begged the museum owner to lend me a car for a spin, and amazingly, he let me. Right, well, I've looked at them, I've fiddled with them, prodded and poked them, but so far I haven't driven one, so now's my chance. This is the Trojan 200, uh, built in 1960. All I've got to do is get in and do that as gracefully as I can. <laughs> oh dear. Right, <laughs> now what do I do? Right, well, off we go. This is my first drive in a bubble car. There are four gears in a, a sequential pattern, so you just go straight up and down the box. But you have to double the clutch between, of course. Oh, I did that. I did that quite well. This was built in 1960 by the Trojan Motor Company, who were down in Croydon in Surrey, and they were renowned for making grocer's vans. That's what they specialised in. It was based on the Heinkel. It's got a Heinkel engine, in fact. So a very simple instrument cluster and a little indicator. The handling is, uh, well, I haven't had much chance to try and do any handling, and I should think it's pretty pathetic, but at least we're going in a straight line. The acceleration, I dread to think what the acceleration figures might be, but it's uh, obviously pretty slow there with the little 200cc engine. 200 cc's. Anyway, I mustn't be too rude about it. It's a lovely little steering wheel and it's very precise, very precise indeed. And you've got a very, very good vision out of the window. And it's picking up on speed now and, yeah, I suppose you could get to like it. I don't think I'd like to drive up the M1 or the M6 or, or even the M25. In fact, I definitely wouldn't like to drive around the M25. If you're in Lincolnshire and you like oddball classics, the museum is well worth a visit. 